Okay, welcome to Bite Size Bits this morning. And today we're going to look at uh, a couple of tools that you may wish to use with your classes. The first one being tiny.cc, which is a URL shortener, and the other one being tagzito. Uh, and I'll talk about what a tag cloud is and how I've used tagzito in my classes. So I'll just flick to my screen, you can see I've got a lot open at the moment, and we'll go to tinycc. Now often you'll want to give your students a URL and I try and use a fair few resources from the City Morning Herald. Now if I highlight that URL you can see that it's incredibly long and sometimes when you copy and paste that URL into an email or put that into a learning management system then it's just far too long for the students to uh, to read. Um, the other thing is that sometimes if it's sent in an email it might actually cut part of the URL off. So enter this application tinycc. Uh, there are a whole lot of other ones out there. Um, tinyurl is one, bitly is another. But tinycc um, does the job for me and Basically all it does is if I go to a incredibly long URL and I was to highlight that and copy it, I then jump back to tiny URL and paste the long URL into the window there and hit tiny. So you can see down here it creates a URL that is very very small. I'll just zoom in there so you can see instead of being a incredibly long URL it's cut that down to http colon double forward slash tiny dot cc forward slash V R I J G. So I could then just copy that, pop that in an email and then send that to the students or put it on a learning management system. Just to quickly show you then, if I was to copy that URL into a new tab and hit enter, that then redirects me to the original Sydney Mining Herald page. Okay, um, very small little trick, but one that is quite useful, particularly if you're going to write a URL on the board. Yes. Okay, nice and short, nice and succinct. Um, students can go directly to it. Um, you would not try and write that URL on the board for the students to go to. Okay, so you get the principle of tiny uh, URL shortener. What we'll do now is we'll go to um, the tool section of this site and we will add a bookmarklet on our toolbar so that if I'm in a site I don't have to then leave that site and go to tinycc to shorten it. I can just click on the bookmarklet which will add it to my site. Okay, so can I get you to drag down to the spot on the page where it says bookmarklet? Okay. Now, over on the right hand side, typically what should happen is you should be able to just drag that where it says tiny up to your book, bookmark toolbar and that should work. But at the moment it's not working with this current version of Internet Explorer and I'm not sure why. So I've got a work around to show you. Okay, so can you have your crosshair on the word tiny where it says drag tiny, do a right mouse click, add to favourites, do you want to continue? Yes. Okay. We're going to type in where it says drag me to your favourites toolbar. We're going to type in tiny URL. No, where it says name. Yeah, and we'll just type in tiny URL. And 
and we're going to choose our favourites bar. So we add that and then you should see it up on your bar where it says tiny URL there. Okay. So now if we navigate, I'm just going to go to a different Sydney Morning Herald story. That'll do. Google pays 47, 477 million over criminal probe into drug ads. Okay, there is the incredibly long URL. I hit the tiny URL button. And you can see now it has put the tiny URL link there. I can copy that and I can shoot that off in an email. It does that automatically. Yep. So that's tiny URL shortener. Um, just a little tool that is convenient um, as you know your, your domain and your URLs get longer. It's a unique way just to uh, shorten those up. Alright, our next tool this morning is Tagzito. Now Tagzito is a fantastic tool. The kids absolutely love using it. Uh, the URL is tagxedo.com and essentially what Tagzito is is um, a visual representation of an accumulation of text and the way it works is for instance if you copy a famous speech or a news article into Tagzito then words that are frequently reoccurring will be made larger in size Okay, so the idea of a word cloud is those things that appear frequently are larger than those that appear less frequently. Okay, um, I'll give you an example. Again, we'll stick with our Sydney Morning Herald example. If I copy that URL into Tagzito here, okay, you can see the first part is Tagzito. I'll just copy that URL into there and press submit. What it's now doing is searching for the text on that site and it is creating a word cloud from the text on that site. Okay, so you can see that uh, from today's front page of the Sydney Morning Herald, words that are frequently reoccurring are channel, video, news, Melbourne, Perth, Sydney, etc. Okay, and these um, uh, frequently occurring words appear within the website and Tagzito simply places them in a shape which as you roll over them it sort of does a bit of an animation, animated little dance. Fantastic way of introducing a topic, brainstorming a topic, um, looking at uh, key features of a speech, key ideas, um, very good as a presentation tool as well. Now, based on that, uh, that word cloud, then what I can do is do change things like appearance, colour, theme. There's a whole lot of different themes that you can choose. And so it changes the aesthetics of it, um, which the, the kids love to do. The other cool thing is down in options is the shape. And so you can change the shape of a word cloud and I just clicked on the umbrella there so the words now will form the shape of an umbrella. Now for our kids and as you know many of them are visual learners this is a fantastic tool for literacy but also for visual learning um, and you know what one of the, the strategies that I've used is I've gone to my syllabus and posted and copied and pasted a whole topic into Tagzito and just to give the kids an emphasis of you know what are the key elements of that particular area of the syllabus that we need to be focusing on okay so here's my IPT syllabus and for instance if I'm doing some summary notes or asking the students to do some summary notes on the first topic I could simply just highlight the contents of that part of the syllabus copy the text, 
jump back to tag Zito and now I can click on load so I can either choose data from a web page or I can simply come back paste my text that's right or I can simply just paste my text in there so you can see it's got a whole lot of text play around with the formatting it works always best too if you get rid of the dot points but I'm not going to do that for the moment and I'm just going to submit that so it then will generate a word cloud from the contents of my syllabus there and you can see that information in the course appears very frequently so that is clearly one of the largest words and you can play around and do a sort of a, a re-spin change as I said as I said the themes uh, orientation yes fantastic for a subject vocab vocab list yes excellent idea there yep now in terms of what you do with that then they can save these things as a JPEG image so like a photograph okay so they could save it put it in a Word document or um, you know print it out in some way uh, they can also include a code to embed in a blog or a wiki um, the benefit of doing that is then if they embed it in a blog or a wiki then it remain it it's maintains this animation type effect which the kids like okay um, obviously if you have an image or a or a print it's a static um, static uh, multi piece of multimedia so yeah great deal of fun there that we we've had with um, Tag Zito. One of the great things that we've done with the Year 7 RE class is, you know, when they come in and they're getting to know the school, is that we go into the shape and add an image and add the school crest, okay, on, from a picture that we've stored. And then the students, I suppose come up with the uh, some of the ideas themselves so they type in the text that they want themselves or they go and get the data from our college website all right so you can see there it's you can play around with the threshold and to give you a slightly clearer image and if I then accept that you need to sort of have a bit of a play around with the shape. Some shapes work better than others, but it forms the college logo. Now, the, the words here obviously don't uh, fit. So if I go to load and instead put in our college website, and submit that, it's going to get a, um, a more real thing. Oh, that didn't work very well. That's because there's not much text on our front our front website. But if I went to admission or whatever, you get the idea. Yep. Okay. So you're about, you know, yeah, that would be better if I copied and pasted that. Uh, that's right. Yeah. So if I submit that one, that's obviously going to be a better a better outcome there. There we go. So. Lots of fun with Tag Zito. Visual learners, as I said, very much appreciate that sort of um, style of representation. And as you say, for a glossary of terms or themes of a novel, it works for it really well in an English classroom and, or any classroom, really.